Hi there guys, this is Neo here, talking to you from my room, really. Um, nothing too special about this vlog, just moving on to the next day, you know, as things normally would. And I decided that in today's vlog, I was actually going to tell you a story. Now, the story is um, about a game. Um, it's actually about uh, Second Life, if you've ever heard of that game. Um, Second Life is a, uh, it's almost like an MMO, kinda, not really. It's kind of like Habo Hotel or My Coke Studios, if you ever, um, were involved in any of those game, kind of, uh, virtual chat room-ish games back in the day. Um, they were really, uh, they were really fun back in the day, and I have a lot of stories about, like, games like that. Um, not so much about Habo Hotel. I've only played Habo Hotel like twice in my life, and once was really ridiculous, and the other time wasn't. Um, but uh, I'm here to talk about Second Life, which um, is if you heard me in my top 120 games of all time list I have here on YouTube, I have um, Second Life up near the 120s because it's not that great of a game. But I do have a lot of stories from it, which is why it's on my top games of all time. And it's hardly even considered a game nowadays. Um, but as I say in my top 120 list, I say that it is a very different game from when I first played it. So this story is going to be very out of date. This is way back in the day. This is like... Um, my god, this is like... Uh, how long was this ago? I'm gonna say this was probably a little under 10 years ago, probably around 9 or 8 years ago, and what happened was, um, during this time, Second Life, I created a character way back then, um, well my brother made the character, and I can't, I can't even begin to remember what the name of the character was now, um, because it wasn't really my character, it was just a character I played when I played it. I didn't want to make an account myself because I didn't want to go through the whole process of it. But um, back then, Second Life was uh, not as popular. It was really low down, mundane game, and it didn't have a lot to it. But what happened was when you created a character, you're on this island at the beginning. It was called Welcome Island, and you had to make a last name and a first name for your character. Now this is where I don't remember the name comes in because my brother chose the last and first name and I don't even remember what it was nowadays. Um, it wasn't We O Neo or anything like that, which is what I would like to say it was, but it wasn't. So unfortunately I don't know what I was um, back in those days. But anyways, on to the story. Um, Second Life, back then... It wasn't so much about, like, just good graphics, good physics engine. It wasn't so much about all that stuff. Apparently, from what I hear and what I've done on research, the game is kind of similar to what it was back then, but it's still very different. Um, there's still a lot about it that has changed. Um, the graphics have greatly improved nowadays. There's a lot more, I guess, quote-unquote dirty stuff that happens in the game. And it's more so over... Um, about advertising and a lot of stuff like that now. I don't know, it's just really different. Because back then it was just about this giant virtual world of a bunch of servers connected together to create giant land masses that you would go to. And your basic form of travel in this game was you'd literally you'd just lift off the ground and start flying anywhere you please. And that was great. That was what was awesome about it. Is that you could just your friend would be like, oh, I'm at these coordinates, and then you just fly there, and boom, there'd be like this giant tower of multiple floors of stores and stuff like that, and you'd just come flying in, you'd be like, hey, what's up, guys, let's hang out. And basically, to start off this whole story of my Second Life Chronicles, um, basically, I first played this character, and I was at the Nexus, or the place where everyone gets spat out from Welcome Island onto, and, um... Basically, what happened was um, I started exploring. I went around. I tried to look for a car or something like that to drive. Now, something you have to note about Second Life is that it had a free creation engine. And this free creation engine allowed you to build anything in the game. 
and you can import textures and put it onto that stuff and you can mold shapes into whatever you wanted and build it and then you can code whatever you just built to do whatever you want it to do whether it be a vehicle or a door or a toilet you can go shit in but really the core principles that came down to this was that people would build buildings they'd build vehicles they'd build all sorts of stuff that was just crazy and absolutely fantastic but eventually what led on when I started playing was that I didn't know jack diddly squat how to use this creation engine I couldn't create anything if to save my life and literally what happened was um, this led to the game being very boring to me when I first started playing it and so what I did was um, I basically sat there and was like alright I need to find something to do I need to figure out somewhere to go so I walked around this plaza, I saw a lot of like shops and stuff like that, and I didn't have money or anything. So when I went into these shops, I was like, oh, this clothing looks awesome, or like, this thing looks awesome. You could create stuff, open up your own shop, like somewhere floating in the sky, and sell your creations if you wanted to. And something about that was that I would go into these shops and see all these cool things that I would want, but I didn't have nearly enough money to buy it. And back then, I didn't know how to make money in the game. Apparently, nowadays, you can get a job in the game or something like that. Or you could open up your own shop, like I just said you could. I think that's how people made money back in the old days, was you just opened a shop and sold whatever you created in the game. Whether it be vehicles or chairs or nice furniture or something like that. But what this eventually led to was me being bored. And I was like, I need to find somewhere to hang out and just meet a bunch of people. And so I went to a club that was um, located somewhere in like these hills, kind of near the ocean. And it was called Club Cherry. And this club was very dark. It was, um, it was a lot of red neon lights, a lot of cherry symbols. And all these like clubs and like public places had like owners. They had these people that originally built it and established it there and maintain it. And what happened at Club Cherry was I went there and I got into the club and like it was bumping and people were grinding on each other and all that jazz. And I was like, hmm, I wonder how I can use this, I wonder how I can have fun here. So what I did was I got on the dance floor and I started dancing all around and started booey bumping and grinding on everyone, as awkward as that is. But it was fun and they had slot machines there and what little money I did have I gambled all away. And I was sitting there, and I was like, well, shit, now I'm broke. And this is a few hours later. And so I went, I flew out of Club Cherry, literally. And I went to a portside town. It was kind of like a dock with a small shop on it, on the dock. And the dock just went out into the ocean, and the ocean just went down, way down. And what I did was, um, I went into the shop, and I was like, well, maybe there's something here I can buy. Maybe there's something um, I can do here, or something. And it turns out, once again, I was like, well, I gambled all my money away, and I couldn't use the creation engine for shit. So then I got really depressed, and I was like, oh man, I just screwed myself over in this game. And so I sat there on the dock, and I was just sitting there, and I was like, this is depressing there's nothing to do and I was then beginning to realize how bad of a game this was initially and I was like man this game can't be bad I mean there has to be more or something I can do something I can like go on with or something I can just basically do you know just something to do because normally these virtual chat rooms they always have something you can be doing there's always some hangout spot and I could go back to Club Cherry and talk to people, but I wasn't really much of a socializer back then. Now here's where we get into the intense part of the story. So in all my lastical daisicalness, I jump off a pier and I go floating down to the bottom of the ocean. Now you can't really die in Second Life, there's no way to die. But there are ways to um, say, I guess, um, get hurt, things like that. And um, I dive down to the bottom of the ocean, and I'm sitting down there. And 
being underwater in Second Life back then was just like being above water. Like there was no real physics engine, or there there was a physics engine back then, but it wasn't like super intense. So that like you were slower, you could jump higher, anything like that. Besides, you could fly in the game. You could just fly underwater, and it would be just like swimming. So basically, I'm sitting there at the bottom of the ocean now, just sitting by like this rock. And there's this anchor that someone built and threw down here as well. And I'm sitting there, and I'm just like, man, I was like, this is so depressing. And I'm thinking about how awesome this situation is. That like I'm I'm run out of my luck and. I was on this pier, and then I fell off, and I jumped into the water, and I swam down to the bottom of the ocean. And then I saw these bright lights in the distance of the ocean, the seafloor. And I was like, what is that? And so I eventually f swam slash flew my way over there, and it was an underwater club. It was this building that someone built underwater that had an elevator shaft leading up to the surface of the water. And... It was just a club where people were dancing, and there was like, there was just booty bumping and grinding like Club Cherry, but it was underwater, and there was all these windows around, like porthole windows, like that you'd see on a ship. And I was like, this place looks awesome. So what do I do? I hop in the elevator and I fly my way down in there, and I come into the club, and I'm like, boom, baby, and it's just bumping already, and everyone's all on each other, and I'm like, what is going on here? And so I sit down, and I'm, like, walking around the club. Well, I sit down at a table, and I sat there for a little while, and I was overhearing someone's conversation. Like, if you know Habo Hotel or My Coke Studio, back then what it would be like is if you were near someone else in the world, you could start hearing their conversation, or you basically start seeing what they're typing. And so I started, like, sitting at tables and walking around, sitting at another table, sitting, like, behind people, kind of, like, hunched over, like, listening to people's conversations. And I was, like, the biggest creeper on the planet. And what happened was I eventually walked over to um, the window in there, and I was looking out of it, and I was like, man, this place is awesome. I was like, I got to hang out here, like, every night. Because all these people were talking about creation, the creation engine and just creating stuff in general and just at how cool it was and I was like alright I know what I'm gonna do and I was like I'm gonna go outside I'm gonna try to understand this creation engine I'm gonna build something awesome and basically what happens is there was a button to the elevator and you had to target it and press E there was a certain targeting system in the game when you target something in the world and you had to target the button and press E to activate it. And there are certain objects in the game you can activate, which would eventually lead to something, which, once again, is a part of the coding engine that was in the game, which a lot of people made use of. And this guy coded this elevator to go down. And basically, what I did was, instead of targeting the button, I targeted a nearby window. Now, you can probably tell where this is already going. And what happened was, I pressed E thinking I'm targeting that I'm targeting that button to the elevator. I'm I'm gun ho sure about that. But no, I'm targeting the window. Now, you could lock certain objects in the game to make sure so that people can't mess with your creations, but you can't lock activation objects. This is where the problem therein lay because now I target that window. I press E to activate it. I open it and it hits me. We're underwater. This can't be good. So all this water comes flooding in, and it's just gushing out of this window, and I'm there, like, holding onto the window, screaming, and it's just filling up this club. Everybody's, like, screaming, crying. Oh, my God. There was, like, babies dying and stuff. There were people, just, like, trying to get over other people to get to the elevator, it was just all bad. There was no consequence to being under there underwater, but people were still flipping out because the room was f just gushing in with water from this one window that I was holding on to, screaming. And I'm like sitting there grabbing it, and I'm like, ah, and I'm trying to close it, and <laughs> I'm just, oh my god. I'm trying to close this window, and the, the physics engine back then took in force as a, as a, basically something that you could basically as a variable in the world 
So I couldn't just close this window because of the force of all the water flying in. So basically what happens is the whole club fills up with water, all the furniture floats to the ceiling, everyone's all stuck at the ceiling, and it's just bad. It's bad because I'm stuck down there holding onto the window, and I just close it, and I'm like, God damn it. I am in so deep of shit right now. And basically what happens is um, the club owner sits there and goes like, God damn it, who opened that fucking window? And everyone's just like, it's it's a madhouse. People are panicking because we're all stuck on the ceiling now because it's full of water. Granted, some people are floating down to the floor, but all the furniture stuck on the ceiling too because furniture naturally would float unless it was apart or welded to the ground. And what would happen was... Well, what happened was the um, club owner had to delete the ceiling of the club, which made all the furniture float to the top of the ocean, and everyone floated up with all of it, and the club owner was just furious. He was just screaming, like, out to the high reaches of heaven, and (laughs) I'm sitting there busting out laughing, but, like, scared for my life at the same time. And what happens is this club owner has to delete the entire club and rebuild it from the ground up. And he has to go around and pick up each individual piece of furniture and put it in his inventory. And I just caused this guy so much hell that night, and I didn't even mean it. I was just trying to leave. And that is when I decided my second life adventure would begin. My adventure of fucking up people's shit without consequence without worrying about what they would do to me, without worrying about any sort of negative reaction. I was just going to be an asshole. And granted, there were some things I did that were very asshole-ish in Second Life, but there was also a lot of things I did that just completely wrecked people's shit, but it was all on accident. None of it was on purpose. And... What happens is, there's actually a bounty list in Second Life, or there was back in the day, and bounty hunters would come after those people that were on the bounty list, and you got on the bounty list by basically destroying someone's objects, or by messing with people's objects when you weren't supposed to, and that would mean bounty hunters would start coming after you. Now, bounty hunters were players who were really good at the creation engine and really good at the coding engine. And what they would do is they would build boxes around the wanted players. You'd build, like, walls and a ceiling and a box and basically hold them in there. And basically what you would do is you'd hold them in there and you'd lock the creation engine for those things so that they couldn't edit and they couldn't get out. And basically what would happen is there is actually a jail where your character would be held and all of the jail would be locked and your character would be held there for um, a certain time depending on whatever you did or how high you were on the bounty list. And that's how bounty hunters got money in this game. Now what happened was doing this act caused me to get on the bounty list but I was at the very bottom like no bounty hunter was going to worry about me I was just a petty crimes guy who blew up a club I mean granted that sounds horrible but that was a petty crime back in the day of second life now unfortunately as much as I would love to go on about my stories in second life that is only the beginning of my adventures and I have countless hours of stories about this that I can tell, but that is basically how my adventure in Second Life started. So I just wanted to share that with you on today's vlog. Um, I know a lot of you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, or if you do, you're probably really excited about Second Life, but trust me, the game is very different nowadays, and it is nothing like it used to be. But um, it was a lot of fun back then, and I have countless hours of stories of just funny shit going on. And basically, to get you more excited for future stories, in the end, let's say I... Basically, the conclusion of the story, and to sum a lot of it up, and to get you hyped up for the next few coming stories of this, eventually, at one point, I was the top number one wanted person in Second Life. Now, you might be like, holy shit, how did you get up there? Well, 
You'll have to wait for me to tell my stories, because I was once the most wanted player and one of the more famous players on Second Life. So, that will be my vlog for today. I will join you next time, whenever I do vlog. It probably won't be another Second Life story. I'm not going to tell these all in a row. I'll span these out over the cross of time and stuff like that. But, um, thank you for listening, if you did listen. Um... If you want to check out Second Life, by all means, but like I said, it is a very different game nowadays. They changed a lot of systems, they changed a lot of the things, how things work. A lot of the things, how things work, that makes no sense. But the creation engine is still there, and the coding engine is still there, I know that. You can still open your own shops, there's apparently jobs now. There's like vampires, there's quests... There's this whole land you can go to where there's actually like a storyline. There's uh, there's just so much in the game nowadays, and it's just really different. But like I said, thank you for listening. I'll see you next time on the next vlog tomorrow. Bye-bye.